What's up everyone and welcome! In this episode, we're going to talk about TrickBot and their re-emergence. It appears this pony's got more tricks up its sleeve now, doesn't it? Oh drat these computers, they're so naughty and so complex. I could pinch them. TrickBot is a popular banking trojan that has been around since October 2016. Its authors have continuously upgraded it by implementing new features. Operators continue to offer the botnet through a multi-purpose malware-as-a-service model, and threat actors leverage the botnet to distribute a broad range of malware, including info-stealers and ransomwares like Conti and Ryuk. To date, the TrickBot botnet has already infected more than a million computers. Now, TrickBot is a distributor for these ransomwares, so TrickBot itself as a dissemination device has infected more than a million computers. But if you look at Ryo, Conti, and all these other ransomware and, and malwares that use the service, you're talking potentially tens of millions of devices worldwide, corporations that pay ransoms of $50 million, etc., etc., etc. But TrickBot has infected more than a million computers in order to then disseminate these other uh, uh, malwares and, and ransomwares. In October, Microsoft's Defender team, the FSISAC, ESET, Lumens, Black Lotus Labs, NTT, and Broadcom's cybersecurity division, Symantec, joined forces and announced a coordinated effort to take down the command and control infrastructure of the infamous TrickBot botnet. But, even if Microsoft and its partners have brought down their infrastructure, the operators behind TrickBot, also known as ITG23 and Wizard Spider, They've resurfaced with new distribution channels, so they didn't just come back online with a new command and control infrastructure, but they now have new distribution channels to deliver malicious payloads such as Conti Ransomware. Guess who? You! Yes, me! The cyber criminals behind TrickBot have signed two additional distribution affiliates dubbed Hive0106, also known as TA551, and Hive0107 by IBM X-Force. The result? Escalating ransomware hits on the corporations, especially using Conti ransomware. The development also speaks to the TrickBot's gang's increasing sophistication and standing in the cybercrime underground. IBM researchers said this latest development demonstrates the strength of its connections within the cybercriminal ecosystem and its ability to leverage these relationships to expand the number of organizations infected with its malware. Again, TrickBot is like a distribution channel, right? They infect computers all over the place with their malware, with the TrickBot malware, and that malware is used to then distribute the ransomware or other malware or um, um, and anything else malicious that's being done by these cyber criminals. So it's a platform that's used to then do more things. The TrickBot malware started life as a banking trojan back in 2016, but it quickly evolved to become a modular, full-service threat. It's capable of a range of backdoor and data theft functions. It can deliver additional payloads and has the ability to quickly move laterally throughout an enterprise. According to IBM, the TrickBot gang, again also known as IGT23 and Wizard Spider, has now added powerful additional distribution tactics to its bag of tricks thanks to the two new affiliates. Earlier this year, the TrickBot gang primarily relied on email campaigns delivering Excel documents and a call center ruse known as Bizarre Call to deliver its payloads to corporate users, IBM researchers said in their release or in their analysis. However, the new affiliates have added the use of hijacked email threads and fraudulent website customer inquiry forms. This move not only increased the volume of its delivery attempts, but also diversified delivery methods with the goal of infecting more potential victims than ever. Bizarre Call is a distribution tactic that starts with emails offering trial subscriptions to various services, with a phone number listed to call customer service to avoid being charged money. If someone calls, a call center operator answers and directs victims to a website to purportedly unsubscribe from the service, a process the agent walks the caller through. Hey, come out and get the nice carrot, pretty bonny. <laughs> In the end, vulnerable computers become infected with malware, usually the Bizarre Loader Implant, which is another malware in the TrickBot gang's arsenal, and sometimes TrickBot itself. 
These types of attacks have continued into autumn enhanced by the fresh distribution approaches according to IBM. Meanwhile, since 2020, the TrickBot gang has been heavily involved in the ransomware economy, with the TrickBot malware acting as an initial access point in campaigns. Users infected with the Trojan will see their device become part of a botnet that attackers typically use to load the second stage ransomware variant. The operators have developed their own ransomware as well, according to IBM. The Conti code, which is notorious for hitting hospitals, destroying backup files and pursuing double extortion tactics. IBM noted that since the two affiliates came on board in June, there's been a corresponding increase in Conti ransomware attacks. Not likely a coincidence. Ransomware and extortion go hand in hand nowadays, according to the firm's analysis. The TrickBot gang has also adapted to the ransomware economy through the creation of the Conti Ransomware as a Service and the use of its bizarre loader and TrickBot payloads to gain a foothold for ransomware attacks. IBM X-Force researchers noted that the most important development since June for the distribution of TrickBot gang's various kinds of malware is the newly minted par partnership with Hive016, um, also known as TA551, Shethack, and UNC2420. Hive0106 specializes in massive volumes of spamming and is a financially motivated threat group that's lately been looking to partner with elite cybercrime gangs, the firm said. Hive0106 campaigns begin with hijacking email threads, a tactic pioneered by its frenemy emotet. The tactic involves jumping into ongoing correspondence to respond to an incoming message under the guise of being the rightful account holder. These existing email threads are stolen from email clients during prior infections. Hive0106 is able to mount these campaigns at scale, researchers said, using newly created malicious domains to host malware payloads. The emails include the email thread subject line, but not the entire thread, according to IBM X-Force's write-up. Within the email is an archive file containing a malicious attachment and password. In the new campaigns, that malicious document drops an HTML application, or HTA file, when macros are enabled. enabled. HTA files contain hypertext code and may also contain VBScript and JScript scripts, both of which are often used in booby-trapped macros, according to the analysis. The HTA file then downloads TrickBot or Bizarre Loader, which has subsequently been observed downloading Cobalt Strike. Cobalt Strike is the legitimate pen testing tool that's often used by cybercriminals to help with lateral movement. It's often a precursor to a ransomware infection. Another prominent affiliate that hooked its wagon up to the TrickBot gang is this summer is Hive0107, which spent the first half of the year distributing the Ice DID Trojan, which is a TrickBot rival. It switched horses to TrickBot in May using its patented contact form distribution method. Analysts observe Hive0107 with occasional distribution uh, campaigns of the TrickBot malware detected mid-May through mid-July of 2021. After that period, Hive0107 switched entirely to delivering Bizarre Loader. According to the researchers who added that most of the campaign's target organizations in the U.S. and to a lesser extent Canada and Europe, Hive0107 is well known for using customer contact forms on company websites to send malicious links to unwitting employees. Usually, the messages it sends threaten legal action according to the analysis. Previously, the cybercriminals used copyright infringement as a reuse, as a ruse, excuse me. The global typically, uh, the group typically enters information into these contact forms, probably using automated methods, informing the target organization that it has illegally used copyrighted images and includes a link to their evidence. IBM X-Force researchers explain. In the new campaigns, Hive0107 is using a different lure, the researcher said, claiming that the targeted company has been performing distributed denial of service attacks on its servers. Then, the messages provide a malicious link to purported evidence and how to rem remedy the situation. The group also sends the same content via email to organization staff and additional switch-up in tactics. In any event, the links are hosted on legitimate cloud storage services where the payload lives, according to the analysis. Clicking on the link downloads a .zip archive containing a malicious JScript downloader uh, titled Stolen Images Evidence.js or DDoS Attack Proof and Instructions on How to Fix It.js. Researchers explain the JS file contains a URL on newly created domains to download Bizarre Loader. Bizarre Loader then goes on to download Cobalt Strike and a PowerShell script to exploit the Print Nightmare Vulnerability, or CVE 2021-34527, they added, and sometimes TrickBot. 
IBM suspects that access achieved through these Hive 0107 campaigns is ultimately used to initiate a ransomware attack. The new affiliate campaigns are evidence of the TrickBot gang's continuing success breaking into the circle of cybercriminal elite, the firm concluded, a trend IBM X-Force expects to continue into next year. The gang started out aggressively back in 2016 and has become a cybercrime staple in the Eastern European threat actor arena, researchers said. In 2021, the group has repositioned itself among the top of the cybercriminal industry. They added, the group already has demonstrated its ability to maintain and update its malware and infrastructure despite the efforts of law enforcement and industry groups to take it down. To reduce the chances of suffering catastrophic damage from an infection or a follow-on ransomware attack, IBM recommends taking the following steps. Ensure you have backup redundancy stored separately from network zones attackers uh, could access with read-only access. The availability of effective backups is a significant differentiator for organizations that can support recovery from a ransomware attack. Implement a strategy to prevent unauthorized data theft, especially as it applies to uploading large amounts of data to legitimate cloud storage platforms that attackers can abuse. Employ user behavior analytics to identify potential security incidents. When triggered, assume a breach has taken place. Audit, monitor, and quickly act on suspected abuse related to privileged accounts and groups. Employ multi-factor authentication on all remote access points into an enterprise network. And secure or disable remote desktop protocol, RDP. Multiple ransomware attacks have been known to exploit weak RDP access to gain initial entry into a network. So, what did we learn? Well, TrickBot is so intertwined into, I'll say, the infrastructure of these cyber criminals. It is used to distribute multiple versions of ransomware or more malware used as a backdoor. It is a force to be reckoned with. So we need to un understand how it functions. I'm going to be doing an episode that breaks down all of these pieces of TrickBot, how it works, its evolution, its history, so that you have a better understanding of that. That's going to come out within the next week. But specifically, right now, what can we do? We have to start with education. Education, to me, about the security threats is one of the most integral parts of a good security policy nowadays. We have to educate everybody in the company about what to look out for. If you're part of some kind of whatever thread, um, even going back and forth on some particular forum or website, whether it's your IT department on Stack Exchange or Stack Overflow um, or wherever they are, you still need to check out things when you're getting these emails that are going back and forth. For example, who is the from? Right. Um, in Outlook today, you know, they have these conversations that the messages could be automatically added to. So it should be pretty easy to spot something that's outside of that conversation. So you need to look for the from. You need to look at signatures. You need to uh, examine any links and potentially run them through any type of malicious link finder. Uh, there are plenty of websites where you can check if a, if a website is malicious. That education needs to be done to all of your employees. And if you if you're talking about your family and all of your family members. Secondly, the way that uh, um, Hive 0106 distributes its malware, we need to look at that and see how does that affect our current policy and education plan. The um, How does Hive 0107 that just joined TrickBot push out uh, their, their malware? We need to understand these things and incorporate them into our education process of our employees and our family members to ensure that they're aware of what to look out for. They have their eyes open. They're awake when they're, when they're looking at their email or, you know, they're dealing with a complaint request through a form from a website. Um, all of these things are inter in integral in uh, blocking the initial access. This is how they, these, these hackers and these cyber criminals get initial access to our network is through these mistakes. Secondly, as this list here on the screen shows, ensure you have backup redundancy, implement a strategy to prevent unauthorized data theft, um, employ the user behavior analytics, employ multi-factor authentication, and secure your RDP. Now they say, <coughs> disable it. Some of us need it, whether it's RDP, whether it's SSH, whether it's Team Viewer, to look on a person's computer, blah, 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 blah. We need it. As opposed to saying you have to disable it completely if you cannot, you need to incorporate what's called a, what I call a mostly off 
security policy where it's only enabled when it is needed. Now you can do that whether it's from the, the user who's active on their machine and you need to gain access, they, act, they enable it, or you can use a scripting process with uh, uh, or lock it down to IP addresses. There are plenty of ways that you can do that, but these are the things that you can incorporate today based on this story to take the learnings from this, the, uh, this event or this news and implement it right away into security policy. So with that, I say thanks again for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe if you haven't already and smash the bell if you haven't already. And I'll see you on the next episode. Take care. Don't forget to run.